Thanks for joining me on another KL Tech Videos. Today I'm going to show you how to deploy MB in the most straightforward and fastest method possible. And all you've got to do is check out the links in the description below to follow along with this video. Now, first things first, we're going to download the MB server. So from the MB main website, we're going to hit download. Go in the server, you're going to find what server you're hosting. We're running a Windows 11 uh, test server today where we host all our test stuff uh, and we're going to download MB server. We're then going to open the server. And we're going to install it. Okay, now I believe that is installed. And if we check the little tray icon down here, we will see the MB server tray icon. Now, all we've got to do at this point is right click and click configure MB. It actually popped up for us there as well. So just bear in mind, it will uh, hit my opening for you. Uh, and it's as simple as configuring to your likes and tastes and wants. So we'll create the first user. There we go. And straight away, we can get into setting up our media libraries. So what I will do is I will go down here to video. That's handy. Uh, and I'll just add music. So there we go. So the first one we'll add will be our movies folder. So if we click add new library, we're going to do content movies, movies folder. It's going to be on the um, on videos. And then we'll find MB and movies. There's our first folder. So simple as that. Uh, this is where we can create our uh, metadata settings, if you will, where it's going to pull the covers for things, pictures for things, things like that. What do we want it in? We want it in English country. We're going to put as United Kingdom. So better type U. Preferred download. It's going to be English. Um, ba -ba -ba. Metadata readers NFO. Yes. Uh, we like to scan from everywhere. Um, I don't like too many collections of things, so we're going to import this up to four. Uh, and then we'll do import collection information when it's at that area. Uh, yes, allow adults. Um, refresh the metadata from the internet. Don't need to do that. That's just, I mean, you can if you want to. That just means re-pulling new images, new pictures, things like that. If things change, personally, when it's downloaded, it's downloaded for me. I, that's, that's how I want it to be. Um, we'll pull from all these. We're going to save artwork into media folders just because everything's a nice um, and fast. Keep cache copy. Video preview thumbnails. I don't generate these on the movie side of things, but if you create a library of like uh, home videos and things like that, you might want to do it. Or if you download like, like a lot of YouTube content, put it into your to your MB uh, server, you might want to do that. I don't do it for anything like that. Subtitle download. Don't use it for this. I use something called Bazaar. Uh, that's another program. That's another video, but I will show you how to do that. Until then, you can f you know feel free to open an account with uh, opensubtitles.org uh, uh, and set all this up for yourself if you want, but that's not something I am doing today but I will show you in another video how to do that. So that's actually fine. Yeah, everything's good there. So that's our first library. The next one is going to be TV shows. Videos, MB TV shows. Again, we're going to be same thing. I'll skip this part for you all because you know exactly what we're doing here. We're just setting up all the little things. And that's that. And then lastly, we're going to create a music folder. Uh, music. Okay, and there's our three basic libraries set up. Now on my production server, I have like four different uh, directories going into the movies library. I've got about four going to the music and another four or five going into the TV shows. Um, you don't have to create new entire libraries for individual different movie directories. Say you've got um, two hard drives with... A lot of movies on one and a lot of movies on another. You just go back into here. And you would just click the little folder add icon there and add your other directory from the other hard drive. Simple as that. So we'll get next. Uh, country we're in is United Kingdom. Uh, English I'll do. Uh, automatic port mapping. Now, um, I actually run my own firewall, a uh, dedicated hardware firewall uh, on my uh, network. So I have automatic port mapping turned off for the majority of my programs. However, if you are using a BOG standard ISP router, feel free to pop this on, but double check after your setup to make sure that it has created some rules in your router um, firewall um, on the ISP router side of things uh, or your custom router to make sure that the port 8920 is forwarding if you are using that port. 
Um, and if you're using a reverse proxy, make sure you've got that set up as well um, for domain name and, and such. But I will show you how to uh, create all these things during this video. Uh, so I'll accept those terms and we're done and we can get into it. Uh, and this is our, uh, our login. So we're going to click key. I'm going to check our password in. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, the server is now set up. Now, right now, it would be attempting to scan these folders for me, looking for the content browser away. There's nothing in them at this time. We are going to put some stuff in them in a little bit, but I just wanted to get them done now. First thing we're going to want to do while we're in here is go to the COGS uh, icon top right. Uh, it's already pulled some uh, updates, so we'll, we'll end up restarting that in a second. But this is the MB dashboard. This is going to give you all the activity uh, and alerts that you need to. So people trying to log into your server with failed passwords, they'll pop up here and here. People currently watching, you, when someone's actually on your server watching something, you'll be able to see exactly what they're watching in this screen and be able to kind of stop that, pause, play, whatever you need to do. Um, or just let it crack on as, as normal. But you'll also get a bit of information here, like IP addresses, uh, the codex that it's transcoding in, things like that. Um, so there we go. Moving down, we've got settings. This pretty much is what we've set up during the setup process. However, um, I don't have my server automatically restart because I don't want it to interrupt um, my viewers uh, watching. So I turn that off. Um, the cache path I leave blank because I've got an NVMe drive as its base, so it's, it's fine to leave where it is. And then we can save that. Now you can actually put a login disclaimer here. Um, my login disclaimer is just advising that I have an advanced firewall and that multiple attempts to log in will uh, not just block them from the server, but report them to a wider internet blacklist. You can put whatever you want there, any big scary, maybe bigger bark than bite, whatever you need to. Um, and also the custom CSS options here are really cool. If you go into the online MB forums, you should be able to see uh, different themes and different ways you can actually modify your MB to look a bit more the way you want. Whatever you do, when you're happy in here, just click save. You don't have to follow me verbatim for that. Users. Now uh, on here, this is where you can literally create new users. You can click new user and you can actually copy settings from other users. So if you want to create new users, you just head to the user section and you click new user. You can put the username in here. You can copy settings from other users. If you try and copy it from the administrator of account, which is this, it does actually turn off manage the server by default for that. So that's really cool. So we could put a user in there such as test, uh, but we're going to copy all settings from Keith originally. And this is it, see? And you can see your, your playback features, your remote control, subtitles, downloads, things like that. So they're all in here. The access you're giving them, which is all libraries, but if you didn't want to give them access to your music, for example, you just turn that off, same for TV shows, whatever you wanted to do. Passwords, you can set your password in here as well, and that'll be the password, default password for them, and then they can log into their account and actually modify and change that themselves, so that's really cool. Uh, when you're happy with all that, you can just literally, one thing I do um, recommend by you, by the way, is actually hiding the user from login screens. Those three checkboxes at the bottom are quite important. Um, because it just means that if someone comes to your default server, they will not be shown on the server. So get those hidden right there. And I do that for every user. Uh, in which case, I should actually probably already do that for Keith as well. There you go. Hide all those. I will be using this. This is just the, the demonstration, obviously, but it's there. MB Premier. Um, I use it. I recommend it. Um, a lot. I know a lot of people get for the lifetime plan. I haven't picked the lifetime plan for this, but... Um, you're definitely going to want to have this in here. There are some things you can't do. You like use plugins uh, without this. Um, and I think it's still the same now. Don't quote me on this, but there was a time where you couldn't actually watch uh, things on iOS devices or TVs or consoles, I believe, without this. Don't quote me on that. That was a long time ago. But just uh, bear, in, bear in mind, if you can't use certain functions on your server, it may be because of this. But I'm going to show you today without the uh, Premiere thing, and then I'll come back to showing you exactly what you get with it. Libraries, we've covered that. We do have advanced um, settings in here, how you want them to display your new content, such as the date it was scanned into your library or the file creation date of the files themselves. Um, I prefer date scanned into the library because that's the day I added it to the library, but that's entirely optional for yourself. Um... There's a lot of different settings in here that you can get to grips with if you want to. Live TV, don't use it myself. I've had a little dabble in the past, um, things like freeview channels and things like that. Um, but it's really cool that you can actually add live TV sources in here. Um, just be aware if it's uh, IPTV, things like that. 
Uh, make sure it's legitimate, make sure it's legal, because um, a lot of those companies can find uh, IP addresses that you're using if you're not using a VPN, for example, and come back down the channel there. So make sure that's all working for you. Up next is a very important part. It's the networks area. By default, subnets of 10 above and 192.168 above are considered on the local network. However, I have like WireGuard networks at home and things like that, so I put my WireGuard subnet in here as well. Whatever you're using, uh, make sure they're there. And then you've got the all-important ports. You've got the standard 8096 port, and then I use the 8920 port to come in. Now, there are a few ways of, of doing this. You can actually have it so that um, the secure connection mode is handled by reverse proxy. So if you're using something like Traffic or Swag or Nginx Proxy Manager, you're going to want to switch this over to handle by reverse proxy. Now, that said... I use Nginx Proxy Manager, and I don't have this handled by the reverse proxy, only because on Windows uh, with Docker, Nginx Proxy Manager doesn't forward the real IP address because it's being uh, conjured up into like a virtual machine using hypervisor. So, um, yeah, I don't uh, have that. And therefore, I point my domain directly at the machine um, with dynu.com. And I create my own SSL certificate using Certify the Web. Um, and you can actually find um, details out on that below um, in one of the links I've put up. Because I've got a video on that as well. So that's fine. Um, so go up here. So the external domain. So if you're going to apply this to an external domain, pop that in there. Make sure it's there. And then your custom SSL path, certificate path will be here. Uh, it uses a PKCS12 file which is just another type of certificate file. Make sure it's in that format if you're using it. And if you have a password on the file, put it in here. Okay, so when you've got Certify the Web installed um, and um, you've registered a new contact, you're going to want to create your um, domain name um, here in the Add Domain to Certificate. And now I've put an asterisk on mine followed by the domain name. Uh, and then it's opted to give me the primary one as well. So I've got a primary and a wildcard domain. Um, the important part of this is that once you've got this all set up and the credentials, you're going to need to go to tasks and do a deployment task. The task will be export certificate. We're going to ask, can't even bloody speak. We're going to export as a PKCX 12 file. Uh, and I'm going to do that to my... Okay, we're going to do it to the search folder. We'll create it in here, in documents. You you put it whatever you want. Uh, and we're literally going to put this as um, mbsert.pfx. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. So we click OK. Save and request certificate. And this will now contact dynu.com, that's my provider, with my API credentials to confirm that it is my website and that I am controlling it. And then download to the system into our folder. And I've set the task at the end to do that. Okay, so after all that weird glitching out and stuff it was doing, it, it has created us a 90-day um, PFX file that we're going to use. Uh, and all we've got to do at this point is jump back over to MB. We're going to head to uh, Network and navigate to our Documents folder where we put the file. And there's our PFX file. Now, if we're going to use the PFX file, now there's no password to add to here. We do need to change this from Handled by Reverse Proxy to uh, Required for All Remote Connections, and it will use the, the PFX file above. Um, which I will click save for. And then we're going to need to restart the server. And you'll see that it is now using our SSL certificate. Now, another way to do this is actually allow the reverse proxy um, to manage it directly. Um, so if we go back to network, I'll show you the other way of doing this now. So if we remove the SSL certificate from here, uh, and we switch secure connection mode to handled by reverse proxy and then save. And then we'll go and restart the MV server again. This is the alternative way of doing it by allowing Nginx proxy manager to manage the SSL for us. 
Okay, now that's uh, restarted. Um, let's get Nginx Proxy Manager up and do that. Just log in now with my Vault Warden Password Manager. I've got a video in the description for that below as well if you're interested. SSL certificate built into uh, MB they were using the reverse proxy one. So uh, 8096 is the port we're going to connect to and that works perfectly. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we've got our domain destination SSL certificate. Um, its scheme is HTTP, the IP address of the machine, 8096, block, block. Um, yeah, and just make sure your certificate matches up, force, force. Simple as that. And then we've got SSL going on here. Um, so that's pretty fine. More updates again, bloody hell. Um, again, this is why I tend to do this all uh, at times where people are not using the server. So that's fine. You can also put up here a maximum uh, simultaneous video stream. So how many of streams your server can handle. So if you go online and look up um, the different um, transcodes that it can do and the CPU can handle how many streams, feel free to pop that in there. I tend to keep this as unlimited as well as the internet maximum bitrate. Um, and instead, I actually go into the user profile uh, and you can actually set it per user down here. So most of my users have one and then a bitrate of like eight, something like that. So that's network. Next up will be transcoding. Um, so basically I put yes and advanced. Uh, and this allows me to select all the different things. Now I literally have every single box on here checked because I have a powerful RTX 3080 on here. Um, and it can literally handle quite a lot of cool things and transcode a lot of different um, things at the same time, which is really helpful. Um, so if you, ha if you have the graphics card built into your computer or you have a dedicated graphics card, come in here and, and check um, advanced and see exactly what you've got that you can transcode. Now, I know a lot of people prefer direct play, things like that. Transcoding is quite cool, though, because you can actually um, kind of buffer up a lot of watch time, a lot of streaming uh, amount of data over onto your client's side as well, which means ultimately it doesn't use too much uh, in terms of resources, especially if, uh, you know, an accidental restart occurs or something like that. It's it, on the client side of things, it'll actually buffer up quite a lot of video space. So yeah, I enable um, throttling here. Basically, all this does is it reduces the transcoding speed to reduce CPU utilization. Now, even if it's um, transcoding using the uh, GPU, not transcode too much. Uh, when you're happy with those settings, you literally click save. Now, there's nothing to really configure in the database size, to be honest with you. Um, MB really set this up pretty well, um, so there's nothing to, to do there. Conversions, things like that, I actually um, don't uh, give my users permission um, to convert to... Also, another thing you don't want to let your users to have, by the way, is remote control of other users. Um, and if they're outside of your network and they're not inside your house, I also don't allow them to remote control shared devices. Uh, don't allow camera upload. There's a few other things I should have covered up here, really, and that should be okay. Um, so there we go. So conversions, things like that. Um, I don't allow full speed conversions on the server either, just because otherwise I can take too many resources um, from the CPU and GPU. Schedule tasks are what they are. You can come in here and manually click, tag them on. You've got your logs here. Cinema intros, you know, if you want to put your own film intros on here or things like that, you can set that up here um, and literally um, chuck them on. Things like that. You've got devices, which are the devices that have you know, logged in. You might see like, you know, tons and tons and tons of them on here. Um, but you don't have to uh, do anything with these either. You could delete them if you want to, but there's nothing really to do. Uh, you could have downloads. Do you allow your users to download things? That can also be customized in the user settings. Uh, the camera upload feature, basically, if you allow a user to do this, means that they can actually upload photos and videos to your server. Um, so I personally wouldn't recommend that either. Uh, you got your DLNA settings across the, uh, the network there as well. So that's fine. Uh, and these are your plugins, things like that. Now, Backup and Restore uh, is now installed by default by the looks of it, so that's really cool. Um, but a few others you're probably going to need. Uh, MB. Oh, there you go. Look, it says it there. The feature requires an active MB Premier subscription. So there's a few things plugin-wise you're not going to be able to use. Uh, unless you have that API keys, if you want to tie this into different things, maybe you're fed up of your users and moaning at you to download content and you want to set up Ombi 
uh, or oversee or things like that, this is where you'll create an API key for that service and then provide it to that service. Never ever had a reason to go into the metadata manager here. So there's nothing to really look there. Your backup and restore as said above, once you've got your MV Premier subscription, you can literally back up everything here uh, into a folder for you as well. And then your webhooks, things like that. This is really cool webhooks um, because you can actually set them up as part of your home theater setup and have lights dim, curtains open and close, things like that. So that's really cool. So that's really a, an oversight of um, of that, basically. So uh, simple to restart the server. I don't tend to do this um, because I don't want to interrupt my users. I do this at uh, random, you know, nighttime or when uh, times I know they're not going to be using the server that much. So that was a basic overview of how to install MB and get a few things set up. Um, at this point, if you've uh, directed those folders um, for your movies, music and TV shows to the directories of your choice with your content in them, by now you should be seeing a whole host of different TV shows and, and music and, and movies on there. I will um, put together a more advanced tutorial in the future, but this really is for people that have no idea what they're doing this is just to get the basic amateur set up with mb um, and there are a lot of good videos around youtube for this exact uh, thing but i thought i'd, I'd give my two pence and uh, spin on it as well so thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one